If you're looking to pick up a USB MIDI keyboard to use with your iPhone or your iPad in GarageBand, then you're going to want to check out this video first because I'm going to go through which features are and are not supported by GarageBand in iOS. Let's go. Hi, my name is Pete. This is Studio Live Today, where I help you create, record, and release your best music. And before you go out and buy yourself a MIDI keyboard, especially if you're going to use it in iOS on your iPad or your iPhone, you may want to check out this video because what I'm going to do is take you through which of the different functions that could be available on those keyboards that you're buying are and are not supported, especially in GarageBand on iPhone and iPad. So let's jump in now and take a look. So let's start with what is supported in GarageBand iOS for your MIDI keyboard. So the first thing is you can send the note information. So that's pretty obvious. Any note that you press on your keyboard is going to send that note data. But for something like this, this Korg Micro Key, the harder you press because it has velocity sensitivity, then the higher the velocity is going to be with your notes in GarageBand. So that's the first thing to keep in mind. Number two is that we have our modulation and pitch bend wheels, and these are both supported in GarageBand iOS. So if you're picking up a MIDI keyboard and it has the pitch bend wheel which can bend your note up and down and the modulation wheel to dial in your modulation for some of your synth sounds, then you can also use those with a MIDI keyboard. The other thing that is supported on the side, this side of this one, we have the sustain pedal plug. So you can use a sustain pedal and you can pick those up quite cheaply. There'll be links down in the description. You can pick up a sustain pedal so that you can actually you press the pedal and when you hit your key you get the sustain sound just like a real piano so that is all pretty cool the other thing that is supported is these octave buttons so you can actually send your octave up and down to make sure that you're in the right octave and you're playing the right note. So that is what is supported on a MIDI keyboard. Let's now jump into what is not necessarily supported so that you can know before you head out and make that purchase. Now to demonstrate what is not compatible with GarageBand in iOS, I'm gonna show you this one, the Akai Professional MPK Mini Mark II. Now this is one of the most popular portable MIDI keyboards on the market and a lot of folks swear by these. But before you rush out and spend the extra cash to buy one, keep these things in mind. When you look at these, you look at all of this coolness. You see all of these knobs and dials, and you see these drum pads and these assignable keys. The one thing to keep in mind is that GarageBand doesn't actually support any assignable controls. So if you look at the knobs there, if you've got faders on your keyboard, if you've got anything else on your keyboard, it's likely that it's not going to work. What about the drum pads, you might ask? At least I can punch in some drums using these drum pads. Well, yes, you can. The good news is that you can, the bad news is that they are not assignable or programmable, meaning whatever GarageBand defaults those pads to, and if you've got eight pads there, it's going to default those to eight different drum sounds. You're not going to be able to dial them in and make sure one's your kick, one's your snare, one's your hi-hat, like you can in some of your other digital audio workstations. And that's another important point to make here is that it, GarageBand is not the only DAW, the only digital audio workstation in iOS. There are others that may or may not support some of the functions. So you may want to pick up something like this because at very worst, it's going to be able to support those features and functions we already talked about. And you've got those additional functions and features if they are supported in GarageBand in the future or if you start using other software. So there you go. I don't mean to be a downer. I really just want to help you make the best decision before you purchase that new USB MIDI controller. There's links down in the description to all the gear I've talked about here today. And you can go over to studiolivetoday.com gear for a heap more information. Thanks again. I'll see you next time.